It's okay. I forgive you for now. <laughs> okay, good. That's much better. Right. So um, we've started off with your invade. You went and got that deep water raptors at around 40, mm -hmm. 45. I uh, assume that's obviously for invade purposes. Uh, you're against a Kane Jax, Valkars, Heimerdinger, as well as a Lux. So unfortunately, your bot lane is stuck with what seems to be the most tilting bot lane of all time. Um... Going for this this deep board here, what what's your early game plan? Well, honestly, um, I'm just trying to make sure I get down the vision so I can spot him in case he should start right side. Um, or basically just see when he walks around Raptor so I can track him a little better. Really just helps me to, you know, keep track of where he's going in the early game. So I usually always do that, then do a backport and switch out for the red trinket. Okay. Um, now, let, let's let's... Let's uh, let's keep going here. So you, you put the deep ward. Obviously, you were gonna check. You were gonna face check this. I I don't know if you've looked at the replay, but the Jax is, is sitting right there. So that could have been pretty. <laughs> that could have been pretty bad for you. Um, right, right. Considering he's leaving, but you see this invade going on. You got a four man invade, and your uh, Caitlyn has had to flash already. But there's an ignite chunked, um, down. By the Lux. So do you, you do you do that often? Like if you see someone getting flashed on, and a summon as well as burning. Uh, obviously, in game, it's on the top left, right? But you can hover, and it will tell you who used the the summoner spell. Mm -hmm. So that's good yeah, to use in not. invades, yeah. Right, right. I've never used that actually before. That's a good tip. Because if they have lots of um, ignites, if they have two or three ignites, a lot of times in this elo that you're in currently, they won't you they won't ping out who used it, or you won't know who used it. But if you just quickly highlight it, obviously, if you're from StarCraft, which you were, so you have a bit better F key micro, etc., than the rest of us in League, right. you can probably do that uh, the pretty quickly so that would just tell you okay ignites down but fortunately for you only Lux has ignite but it's good for heals and things um, right, looking right. at the debuff bar because sometimes they won't ping anything so um we're going to react to this invade jackson has no choice obviously i know what happens you know what happens we hit the axe you walked into a whole bunch of turrets but it doesn't matter you olaf he flashes ignites kane gets the first blood because people are greedy and here we auto We've got full Conqueror stacks, no one Pick up the Axe, there we go. Auto's good. Okay, so, still a little slow in the Axe play, but, you know, based upon the Revive review, significantly better. Right, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, what, what is it? What is it officially? I mean, reduced by 4.5 seconds, it's insane. Mm -hmm. There's still nuts here, there's turret plates here. You want to start right. So this is where things get very interesting, I think. This is where the game sort of begins to, already at this point, run away from you. So, uh, currently this account is what? Is it, this is this is your main, this is uh, gold 5, but you were plat what at the end of the season? Uh, actually, it was diamond 4 last season, but I yes. dropped down just before a couple of days the season finished, basically. Um, so I ended up plat 1, probably. And yeah, this season, I, I don't know why exactly, but I didn't have the best time playing League of Legends in terms of success. So I dropped down to, like, what is this, G4 now, I think? G4, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I said 5, that's old school. Uh, G4, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I noticed, because I, I knew where you were, and I knew where you've played, and we actually, when I was on my Smurf streaming, you actually sniped me, and we actually ended up playing a game together. So. Yeah, I remember. And that was plot one at the time, so I remember that. Mm -hmm. um, right, now, here, here, obviously, your goal is to get back to Diamond and then keep improving. That's always been your goal. Mm -hmm. You know, straight up, this is warded, right? Yeah, you yeah. should, obviously, here, you're playing a bit more aggressively, but you should know 100% this is warded, and you know... That they've got three people here. So, in retrospect, do you think doing this is a good idea? At this no, HP? I was I was actually considering backporting and maybe like either starting at my top side or starting at his top side. But then I thought, okay, Kane died, so maybe that's not a good idea. But I have to say, my crisis management when it comes to these situations is always really bad. Mm -hmm, um, I'm I agree. personally not a big fan of invades because people aren't really coordinated enough, especially mm -hmm. on the lower elos. So I, my game plan was just, I don't know, I basically I didn't have a game plan. I think that's the issue here. Um, I just don't know how to do it well with invades, especially if my laners don't really properly ward the entrances. The follow-up game plan is always a bit uh, improvised, let's say. Exactly. So obviously you were, ooh, unlike, I mean, if they were trying to s snipe you. So this is, this is, okay, so based upon what you said, I fully agree with you. I hate invades, which is why this is great for you, but in theory, you're against the cane, so if he's following a typical cane route, he can easily start on raptors, he can also start on red. Most mm -hmm. likely, with no invade, that's what he's doing. So, for me, especially when I'm smurfing or leveling, or even up until, I don't know, let's say, D3, D2, 
even up until that point, I will literally buy level f uh, 14 seconds, sprint out of the gates like a crazy person, run to this bush, pixel bush, and I will ward it mm -hmm. without question. Why? Because people always go for these stupid invades, and I hate them because they're dumb for the, all the reasons you said. I 100% agree with you. I hate them with a passion. But I gain more out of stopping an invade than I do from tracking a low elo jungler, mid elo jungler going raptors. This mm -hmm. is not going to tell you anything because half the time their clear is a wackadoodle, you know? By the time this dies, yeah. you still don't know where he is because right. he's just doing random shit. So in this case, if you put a ward here, right, you stop the invade immediately, especially if they're running at the same time because you'll get to it first mm -hmm. and use good auto space, you know, max range ward just on the edge of the bush and then get out. That way they see you, they stop it. Your bottom lane should ping this and you uh, ward this and you can ping to watch entrances and from there you can make your decisions, you know, where do you start, etc. Right. Um, this is a great high elo ward, but it's not going to help you as much down here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward to after the invade, you know this is warded. Mm -hmm. And so you said, okay, I don't know if I should stay, I don't know if I should leave or go back to base. You have two options. Kane died. So most importantly, can Kane take your red level one? No, because he's not here, you know. He currently is on his red. Obviously, we see where he's going currently. He's, his intentions are very malicious. He wants to take mm -hmm. you out. What you could have done is if you weren't sure, should I start this? Fortunately, you were lucky. You just go up to the blue buff. You don't even have to go back because you're alive. Just take this mm -hmm. and then do a full clear down. You have vision protection for any possible invades. Um, so you would see Kane coming through. I mean, if Kane comes through here, you just go from your blue. You can invade his red. You got vertical jungling. Mm -hmm. However, none of that's all of that's theoretical. What actually happens is you do your red, good, you get it, your smite will 1 HP, lucky, but you know, safe. But then for some reason you go to Krugs. Well, what's the logic here? Well, honestly, I was I was just thinking about the lanes that I want to gank. Okay, um, good. What what lanes were those? Well, honestly, I thought Heimerdinger is a is a pretty much a no-go. Um because I don't know, like whenever I gank Heimerdinger, sometimes it always goes wrong. Um mm -hmm. so I tend to avoid this lane at all. Um, and I thought, well, Jax can be a tough lane to gank because he has that much damage mitigation and escape. But maybe if Shen lands a good taunt or something, we can make something happen. And if not, I could still rotate down to mid lane and pick up an easy kill on the Valkos, since we have enough CC there and he basically has no escape. Um, and he also doesn't have cleanse with him, so that should be an easy gank if I if I'm in if I am in position right there. So yeah, that was basically the plan: go from red to crux to retros, and then do the top side into the gank top on mid. Okay, and also your fights around the Raptors here were great because you went on the Valkos, forcing him to both flash and barrier. Uh -huh. So you know at this point, literally no sums. Yeah. Um, this is some dude trying to be perma high elo roaming pike. Obviously, I'm not a fan if you're not a, one, a good mid laner, and two, not a good pike, but you know, that's an issue in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So the concept, I understand your goal now. You want to do your red side and then you, you're level three, you can assess, you should be decent enough HP to make a play mm -hmm. like you said. The only issue is you haven't considered, and this is a transcending uh, concept I want you to keep in mind as we as we go over this. Mm -hmm. You forget the enemy jungler may or may not have a brain. By that right. I mean is a lot of the times you'll play a gold plat jungler, right? Mm -hmm. um, so not low elo, but not high elo either. Sometimes they make very good plays and sometimes they make very aggressive plays, not even good ones. They just do it for the sake of, you know, being alpha, etc. So in this case, what you have not considered is if this was warded, what would you do if you were the cane? I know what you would do. You would invade and kill him. Um, right, yeah. But you didn't consider where the cane would begin. Now, your ward just died. Literally this moment, it just died. And Kane did not walk over this. And at this point, it's 218. So I think it's safe to assume also the fact that the Lux just shows up here and the fact that the Lux was not bottom lane that it's most likely he started on this blue buff. Most likely, right, yeah. right? Just because she didn't show for the longest time, obviously mm -hmm. he was back. But once you see this, adios. Right, yeah. Yeah, I was actually, uh, I was already wondering why Kane hadn't shown up on my ward at the top side when he should have done his Raptors or his uh, Red at least. But I, I think this is something that happens to me a lot in League actually. Is I, I start to wonder about something, but then my thinking doesn't go far enough to actually like ring the alarm bells and make the according play, you know? So they were, well, this is interesting, and I was dead already, basically. Yeah, your crisis assessment, essentially, yeah. Um, also worth considering is that 
you've now gone for the um, the hunter's machete and hunter's talisman for improved clear speed, not for du not for dueling. Uh, you could have easily got if you were planning on the way you plan the way you play this game and the way you played the last game. Um, I know it's good practice to get these things to clear faster, but it's like in the Orn. It's like in the Orn, um, the video I released a while ago. Thanks, Camp to Junk, for subbing. Um, I said, if I am Orn and I want to go and fight and gank, I wait for 400 gold to upgrade to Ruby Crystal. Mm -hmm. If I want to farm, I'll upgrade to Hunter's Machete and make sure I do a full clear. In your case, I know your goals. You just told me your goals. Maybe a long sword is more beneficial. Right, yeah. It gives you a bit of an edge in those ganks, and obviously, I know what's coming, you know what's coming, Twitch chat will find out soon enough. And here you've got all the tracking, okay? And unfortunately, you didn't get the Krugs, which they're saying is very tilting. I agree with you, it's very tilting. Um, but you know he's still here. You press tab, you see a CS, which means the dude has now three kills. Mm -hmm. So even though his farm is only six and yours is four, he has a metric ton of lead on you. But they're all low. So you need to factor in what, his, what is his next play, okay? Now... Mm -hmm. For the sake of clarity, we'll keep it at your uh, vision point. So you see Kane, off he goes, low HP, three kills, it's upsetting. We go straight to blue, okay? We're chaining our axes a little better, okay? Nice. Um, why Why wolves? I just want to, I'm just sort of probing your logic, why wolves? Well, I thought, if, I mean, he was very low, so either he would have time to only do his uh, crumb and his wolves and then go back, or he goes back right away, but either way, I should probably have enough time with how fast I clear on Olaf to do my blue side and then go take the crab for like improved uh, jungle control basically. Okay, so in this case, because you saw him go here um, at low HP and you, of course you, now you're planning, if he goes back, what is the soonest time he could arrive sort of in the river? Now we can do this and you can see him rotating straight up. You see? Mm -hmm. Jungling is very timing based and you know that. Uh, all decisions we make have repercussions. He's obviously level three here. No. So what I would have done, um, best case is just run and take that crab. Mm -hmm. First, don't, don't even take blue, just take the crab, get the control. Um, you have to control woods, put a control wood in the river, right? Protect mm -hmm. yourself. You are behind, right? You are behind. You no longer have the benefit of uh, level three to level two leads. You don't have the benefit of Olaf's ax smashing, uh, annoying duality because he is ahead of you mm -hmm. and he has a long sword. Okay, so in a, in a tight fight, he will end up coming out ahead. Mm -hmm. Here, in this case, take the outermost objective first, right? What you could have done if you were very cheeky, if you were Rengar, and you were, say, say you got the Krugs, you know, that would have been nice. Um, you can always probe, perhaps, for a red invade. But I think, in your case, it's safer not to. Good assessment. Mm -hmm. um, but you played it too safe. You had the vision okay. control. You had the clearing speed items. Place the control wood. Take the crab. Come back here. Okay, start your blue buff, move back up, hit the plant to just see if he's running here. And as we play it, you see him in the mid lane. Right. So you have all the information you need. Now, if you had done what I said and do crab first and then go into blue. Okay, I don't, I don't know what he's doing. He's, he's griefing you. Um, and you see this, right? Now you can make play. Look at this. I like this. This is good. This is good. Okay, so now you've done the opposite order. Imagine if you had done this already and this. You know now you have one singular focus. Yes. That one singular focus is annihilating this guy for ruining your day. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Let's see. You wait for him. You're trying to trap him. He's smart. He knows he saw you. Uh, he knows that you saw him, rather. He's playing very safe. See, now normally this would be down already. So what you could, if this was down, just go face him. Right. Face yeah. check him. He's half HP. You saw that. Mm -hmm. You know Valkaz is back in base. Right? Or he died, rather. So you've got 30-odd seconds minimum to make a play here. This whole time, you could have had blue buff and crab, level 3, and you could have just killed him. Mm -hmm. And you would have. Because look where he sits. Look. See, this is good. This is a bit of patience. Counting here. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Okay, he hasn't shown. I know he's there. Go kill him. And he shows right. even, you see? Like, he shows out of the bush. Actually. You actually didn't right, even see yeah. that. But it was, it was very fringe to your vision. Mm -hmm. um, so now you're focusing on this, and you took wolves, which has now disrupted your camp sequencing as a full clear jungler. And now we ease away because you think, oh, don't know where Olaf is, nice and safe. So you gave him an, a free pass, uh, three there, a free pass for his mistake. His mistake was greeting and wasting time. And now you think, okay, what, what are you thinking? You think Kane went back to base, maybe. 
because he was half HP, or he's definitely on the red buff? No, I actually thought he was definitely top side, but I, honestly, like, I thought with with Shen and me together, we could probably 2v2 them, which is, I don't know, like, looking back, it might not be the best assessment, but at this time, I definitely thought we could do it, so I just uh, wanted to honestly just apply some pressure on top lane. So I think I think here's the same thing in the VOD review we had before. Your risk assessment of the situation slightly lacks. Mm -hmm. Slightly lacks. And here you get hit by vision plant. So now you're pinging, that's you pinging, I assume, saying, okay, look, Kane yeah, is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now your mistake here is not hitting this. This is your mistake. This is your counter move. Hit it so that it hits this area. Because if you did that, okay, you see there's nothing, um, but it gives you peace of mind. You know, mm -hmm. if he is coming up, it tells you he's there. If there's nothing, it gives you peace of mind knowing where he isn't. And by extension, you can say, right, he's on Krugs or Red, because I know he just hit the vision plant. Mm -hmm. You don't hit it, and then you just wander off back. Now, here, um, you hit the control ward, that's nice. So, in theory, um, did you scan before your previous gank? Yeah, yeah, I scanned in the okay. pixel push. So, you know he didn't walk on down since then. There's no reason to use your pink ward. You know this is clean. Right, yeah. So, if you had from base at the beginning, level 2, take the crab, take put your control ward, take this, kill the cane. You know he doesn't have um, red because he took yours. Go and take his red, and then you move your control ward here. Now, you can gank top lane. Do you see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The flow of the decision-making... And the, the reward for that decision making ends up putting the puzzle of this early game in a very nice place for you. You steal his red, you kill him, you have good vision control. And now once you gank him here, okay, it's Jax, you're right, he's very tough to gank, you have the Shen. But if you chunk him in anything, that's fine. Now, once you fall back into your jungle, you've got Gromp, Wolves, Raptors, Krugs. Full top to bottom clear. Mm -hmm. That's the flow, the circle, the, the loop method I've talked about in my videos, sort of making that, that nice play that brings the map into some kind of geometric uh, progression that, that's, it's, that's pleasing to the mind. In mm -hmm. this case, you've sort of just knee-jerked your decisions. Okay, blue, I need to get blue. I need to protect my buff. Okay, I'm going to do blue side. But you don't think why you do wolves before Grom. You see? The, the, right, the fact yeah, that you yeah. did wolves, for me, is, is funny because now where do, you, do you go to Raptors or do you go to Grom? You see, the order in which you clear after wolves, if not, none of this happens, is now in question. There's, mm -hmm. You're going to be wasting time moving back and forth between your camps rather than having a nice fluid motion in your farming. Mm -hmm. So back to reality again. That's the what if. Back to reality. We don't hit this, so you don't know where it is. You waste your control ward, which is fine. You've got two, but at the same time, you know, it's expensive. And now you want to walk all the way around. Now, from the red team's perspective, they didn't see you. But Shen bless his soul, thinks you are still in that bush. So he's gone in for his taunt. And because it wasn't warded, and because Jax is playing aggro, because he thinks, hey, Olaf just ganked me. He's not going to gank again. I'm Jax. He played aggressively. And the fact that the Shen went in here is very good. Why? Because if you look at the minion waves, cannon wave, shoving in, it's going to be nice for Jax in a second. So the Shen is saying, this is our time to gank. But you decided to take a, the scenic route. Mm -hmm. And that's what kills you. Because here, if you go in now, where's Kane? Just finishes red. Right, yeah. So if he, he, Shen saw you, put the ward and thought, okay, baby, let's go, you know? This is nice. He's got no flash. He's got no TP. Even if we don't get a kill, we chunk him. But because you take the long way around, he gets off his counter-strike. He knows Kane is coming. They all see you. And unfortunately, again, you didn't consider where Kane was. Right, yeah. I, I know you told me, okay, I know he's on red, I know he's red side, but you didn't consider, and I, I do this myself, it's sort of like, I can get them before he comes. I can get I can get the gank up before Kane arrives. But because you took so long, now you're in the situation. And again, uh, you got to try and pick up those axes. I, this is better though, huh? This is better. Like, you're using shorter range axes so that you can actually pick them up in fights. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I, I don't think you live there uh, as much. Anyway. Yeah. I actually have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Because you said I could k kill Kane on the middle lane bush just a middle, minute before that or something. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Kane has like two escapes, right? He has the Q, he can Q over the wall, and he can, he can also E out. So is there really like a real chance of me killing him? Killing, killing is a bonus. Because the Kane was dumb and sat on this side of the bush, 
okay, and towards your mm -hmm. side of the map. Mm -hmm. It means if he wants to escape, he has to Q and then uses E, right? Mm -hmm. And at this point, neither of you have your flashes. So if he misses one of those or you interrupt the E enough, he's dead. Right, at the same okay, time, yeah. even if you chunk him, you chunk him a lot. You know, one axe plus all your spells and E as well, plus a few orders with W, you chunk him enough that, that you can chase him into his jungle. And that's all you're looking to do. Even if you don't kill him, he has to go base now. There's no way he can stand a full HP Olaf who's going to be stealing his entire top side. Mm -hmm. So the, the move itself isn't necessary. The kill is a bonus. The, right, the goal okay, is yeah. to get him the hell out of there so you can steal his jungle and get him top lane mm -hmm. and sequence your entire jungle to control it. Right. So, so now you have a, a separate. So what's, what's, okay, bad things happen. You're tilted. You're upset. What's your next plan now? Well, I mean, since Drake is on the map, I'm trying to play around bot side a little more now. Also, like ganking, ganking Jax didn't work out so great for me, so I'd rather focus on mid and bot lane right now, honestly. Um, and here I thought I could probably like try to gank the Valkos if he's open, or if not, like uh, just farm my own camps. Okay, so the Valkos, if you're timing his sums, you'll know that his barrier is up. Um, and his flash will almost be up. Mm -hmm. So here we think no flash if you're timing it. This, is, this would have been a good gank right mm -hmm. now, quickly. You know Kane is topside because he got the kills. He's going to finish up with Krugs, but he's two levels on you. Instead, we go bottom lane and then we decide, you know what? Actually, hi, Medinger. So no, let me go. Never mind. I'm not going to mid lane. I'll go Raptors. So waffling. Commit to a decision. Right, yeah. Are you going to farm to protect your jungle and get yourself some levels? Or you're gonna gank, and if you're gonna gank, which lane are you gonna gank? Because that entire time, Kane is off the map. Still, to this point, he's off the map. Even so, if you had any inclination, it was here. For example, that's a free Gromp. You see, Gromp and out. Hit the plant. Hit the plant. You see nothing. Take his Gromp. You see, take it quickly in and out. Smite it. Take it. Deny him something. Then, fall back. Maybe I can gank bot lane if bot lane's not there. Now let me control my jungle. But mm -hmm. the fact that you said, let me go gank, but you didn't even commit. You sort of waffled both. You sort of drove by like, eh, eh, never mind. <laughs> and, right, yeah. and then you go back to Raptors. Again, why Raptors? There's no logical clearing. Now, for example, if you did what I said earlier and you did Grump and Wolves, um, then this would make sense because Grump and Wolves will be down. Now you do Raptors, then you do Krugs. Maybe you make a gank. And now when you go back to base, all of this will spawn in order, you see? You want mm -hmm. to try and get your camps to spawn in a nice order that you can maximize your XP because we don't have catch-up experience at all. So randomly taking camps in between ganking will actually end up hurting you. But nonetheless, right, yeah. you know, th this should have been done beforehand. Because imagine you go straight from base to Krugs to Raptors, okay? You'll be level four. And now, like hypothetically, again, play this in our minds. You die 2v2, sucks, whatever. Respawn, finish this, okay? Again, I still think some, some long swords would be nice. Take our Krugs, take our Raptors, and at this exact moment, you would have done both those camps. You'd be level four, look where the, look where the Valkas is. Right, yeah. But his flash is up. So the least you can do is maybe burn the flash because mm -hmm. your flash is up now too. And that's all you're looking for, burning some sums because when you're level six with no flash, you melt him. You just run through him and eat him like sushi. Right. But because you, you first said, let me gank, you said gank first, farm afterwards, but you didn't actually end up doing any of it. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Like you, you just sort of waffled eh, and then you went back into your jungle. Yeah, yeah. This sometimes happens to me when I'm like, I'm making a quick decision and then I think about it and I think, oh, well, this is maybe not the best decision. So I decide to turn turn around and do something else. But I, I guess it's just wasting time. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. It's, it's, that's all it is. It's wasting time. It's the same thing in the VOD review. So your Olaf mechanics, your, axing, your axe pickups are better. Um, but your uh, waffling is still... We can see it. And now, at the same time, again, you're not considering at all where Kane could be. Like, you're just, you're just saying, you know, I want to gank. Um, and because you didn't take a wide looping path, you didn't see that this was control warded. Mm -hmm. It was control warded the whole time. You took a very narrow path. Um... So what I would have done here is if you take a wide angle path to get a better angle onto him, because that's important, you see this is warded, you clear the ward, and then you say, right, I'm going to move up into the river. Mm -hmm. And you would have seen this. Because this now, this with this vision, 
And the fact that your support is here is ungankable. This is ungankable. Gank assessment is 0%. Right, We've yeah. Got level 5 turrets, Lux full HP in the bush, useless Caitlyn. Swain is, is feeding his birds. This, this is never going to work out. And you and you all in. Like, you're like, <laughs> flash smite, I will kill you. Um, but Lux. Now, she uses her heal to, 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 to save you. Okay. But you're dead. Now, Kane says, oh, thanks for the dragon. And I am going to enjoy it. Okay, well. Looks like none of their mechanics are <laughs> very good. Swain. So, so they miss everything. <laughs> And then uh, Swain, Swain cleans up a kill. So for your team, it's not the end of the world. But for mm -hmm. you, it is the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you get shot, shot down as Olaf early, like, I always have a really hard time to come back from that. Like, I basically have two, two like, kinds of games. The one where I really pop up early game and just win. And, like, the games like these, you know, where I can't make anything happen early or I get invaded and then it just goes further down the drain, basically. Exactly. So I, you hit the nail on the head. You get too desperate. And that's why I'm, I'm curious as to why you pick junglers, especially in this elo that you are in now at, at the moment, that force you into this one play style. Because if you were playing something like, for example, a Rengar, and that invade happened, you know, and you died here, it's really not the end of the world. You could easily take the, the scuttle and then just do a nice, just farm your full jungle. Control mm -hmm. your jungle. You know level six comes. You're going to one-shot that Heimerdinger before stopwatch. Um, you know that you'll be able to one-shot everyone later. You know you can deal with Kane to a degree. Um, but as Olaf, you're very much forced into making a play. So when bad things happen, you start to, you feel the, the time of the game closing in on you and it makes you feel, I guess, in a jungle sense, claustrophobic. Like mm -hmm. you need to make those plays. Now they were asking Twitch, can they not win that 2v2? Twitch chat Bolas? No, because she, <laughs> she had no HP. She was useless. She was, she was, and Swain was back for some strange reason. Maybe he was chunked. You know, and the wave was pushing into her, so all she had to do was play it super safe. But Lux is full HP here; they never win this two v two. That's him merely saying, "I must make a play because I'm Olaf." And that desperation kills his game. Now, you know he's here. You know Kane's there. Um, my jungle senses should go off. Uh, my jungle senses should go off. Um, you know, Kane's bottom side, I'm probably losing this red. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. uh, and your control wards you've placed... Is this still your control ward? Yeah, I think this is still my control ward. Yeah, yeah this is my control ward. So you bought two at the beginning. You didn't use one where you should have. You used one where you shouldn't have. You bought another two and you haven't used them since. Mm -hmm. So when you went on your little waffle adventure, you might as well get some ice cream to go with it and put some control wards down. Like, you know, it's not right. totally wasted if you if you put some vision down because you would uh -huh. see Kane here. <laughs> yeah, Hello. I mean, like, this was obviously a play, right? Um, yes. At this point, I'm just super angry. Um, and yeah, but actually, I wanted to I want to go in depth on what you said about the champions. Would you actually recommend, like, a different sort of champion pool for me then? Because, like, right now, all I play is basically Olaf, Rexa, and uh, Warwick. What's your win rate on Olaf? I mean, last season was better. This season, it's not very good. I don't actually know the stats, but I'm pretty sure it's below 50%, like, by far. Okay, let me... Um, I don't have your summoner name copied and pasted, so just put it into op.gg. Tell me. Tell right. me your, your uh, Olaf win rate in how many games? Uh, it's 37% over 40 games. Would you say that's a, a good thing? No, definitely not. So there's but a I'm disconnect. Also, like, uh, yeah, but I'm also not, like, against spending some time learning a champion if it's gonna net me a better win rate later on, you know? I agree with you, but imagine if that was a 37% win rate with 40 games with Rengar. That would 100% make logical sense to what you just told me. Um, for Olaf, he's easy to play. There's a few mechanics with the axe pickups and uh, knowing some angles of approach mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, one tricks and challenger, things like that. But he's not a champion you want to have a 37% win rate on in 40 games. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it shouldn't take you more than 10 games to get to a degree of fluidity with him. Um, my sense is not so much mechanical. It's, it's one, um, the base skin is hysterical. Two, um, uh, there's a game style issue because you feel absolutely forced. Now, Jax has done what I wish top laners would do in this case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just do even more, man. Like, 
you never see this in this elo, I was actually really surprised. Yeah, but that's the thing. Playing in this elo will develop you very bad habits. Um, Because you're not going to be used to seeing these things, which you normally would have if you were still D4 plat 1, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's all can be avoided. All of this could have been avoided at level 3. And Bolas was asking, uh, actually, could you win the 2v2 top? And I said, no, but you can win the 2v2 top lane provided he doesn't take the long way around the clock. If he just goes face in here, they win it, because Jax is dead by the time Kane arrives. So that's like, that's right. a big mistake. But here, before you even die to the red buff, you know, um, you went directly to your red buff, and because you didn't place vision during your waffle time, Kane gets a freebie, but Jax is here. Now, if you had gone straight to this side and say, I forego my red buff, I give it up such as it is, you at least get to control your topside jungle. There's no sense of jungle protection um, mm -hmm. in, in your thinking, in terms of camp sequencing, in terms of making sure your camps are off the map. And that's that's the point of, of why I made that root video with Evelyn for farming junglers, is because it's not so much about beautiful camp sequencing, which is something I love. It's about maximizing the experience and saving your jungle from counter jungling because the camp's always down. You know? Right, yeah. And Olaf clears very quickly. So that invade sucked, but if you, at level one, stop that invade, none of this happens anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, you're trying to do some high low things. Um, um, why is Shen flashing? I have actually no idea. <laughs> this was a very awkward gank. He almost got me killed with this. Yes, he did. Uh, but again, you have balls of steel to gank a level eight jacks, tell you that much. Oh, man. Well, honestly, like, I think this is a, maybe it's even a problematic, a problematic mentality, but like, I really don't like doing nothing in the game because like in StarCraft, you always have to be active, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I bring that kind of to League of Legends, which is also why I guess why I prefer early game champions over scaling ones, um, because I really like to came, like to dictate the pace of the game. But when it doesn't work out, like in this game, it, you know, it really doesn't work out. Yeah, you feast of famine. Um, but this is not the champion you want to feast of famine on. Um, mm -hmm. But I see, because you like to play Warwick, Olaf, and what was the other one? Uh, Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is so much better. So much better for this. The way you're playing, you're not optimizing his camp sequencing, you're not optimizing his full clear, you're not optimizing his uh, solo dragon herald control, the total snowball face roll potential. Um, you want to get two kills and before you first back, and then you want to just run into the enemy jungle and kill him to pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. With Rek'Sai, you can, but you also have the, the, the option of building more tanky, of building a little bit safer, of ganking without invading. You have map scaling, which is absolutely huge in this elo. Mm -hmm. um, and I still do recommend Rexa for gold players, just as a thing, guys. Uh, I think you need something that scales because no one ever knows how to close a game. Um, again, here, um, no thought process about the uh, where the cane is. Um, it's good to push, though, but at the same time, it's also okay to not push. Mm -hmm. Kane is in the area, I was tracking him, I'm leaving. So there's no sense of jungle tracking, it's more... It's all about you. You, Olaf. Right. You know, which is which is good, but you're not thinking about, hey, my lanes are potatoes and I need to protect them from themselves. Mm -hmm. um, because you're not tracking him at all. Like, right, right. you're not considering it. You, you, you sort of... I don't mean this in a bad way, but you're sort of jungling in a very entitled sense. Like, the map is mine. I will make the play. It's a StarCraft thing. I, I yeah. am playing against the enemy, but the enemy to you is the laners. The enemy to you is is the cane. Right. You see? Not the laners, it's, it's the cane. And he is your responsibility. You imagine it as, as, as a group of 1v1 matchups. It's your job to control him or to suffocate him such that he doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. That can mm -hmm. take many forms. Um, here again, we scan, but you don't have ultimate. Uh, he has no mana, so that's good. We smite him, we hit the axe. Okay, we'll pick up the axe while he's stop watching. Good. Uh, we ward for no reason, and then we do that. Okay. So, you know, you warded, but I don't think you needed to. If Kane was going to come, he's not going to go walk through the river. He's right, not. Yeah. He's, he's got. He's got this ability. But again, there's no. There's no sense like where you. Where Where are you going now? So you, you died. You went and took Raptors. You ganked mid. Nice. You burned a stopwatch. Nice. Now what? Well, I was looking top. I can remember this moment very accurately, actually. And I was looking top, and I was thinking, oh shit, he's in trouble. So maybe I can still help him. Um, but then I realized, like, as I was walking there, yeah, there's no helping this guy. Um, and then I had to kind of readjust the game plan again, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So in this I mean, case... He's super dead, like, looking at it in the replay again. Like, this doesn't make any sense. But at the time, I thought it might save him. 
Mm -hmm. So, here we go. Nope. Warded. We do not beat him 1v1. This this sucker went Moby Boots. That's Rost. He's just, he's just laughing at you right now. It's arrogant. And if you were another champion, you can make him punish. You could punish him for it. Right. Um, but because you're Olaf, you're screwed and because it's Jax. Jax is a champion that exists. Um, we don't like his existence. This pike makes me chuckle. But the pike is not the Good. issue. You're the issue. <laughs> um, that was just... He Tom and Jerry'd you. You know what I mean? Like, he just baited yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He Tom and Jerry'd <laughs> you, straight up. And look, look at these look at these wards. Look at these wards. Who's pinging this? Is this you pinging that? Someone was pinging the camps. Okay. Bot lane gets it. So now, you, now you're feeling... Oh, thank God. Thank God, bot lane. Thank you. <laughs> right? Thank you. This, maybe we can win. Right. So. Krugs. Raptors. Dragon. Not gonna be able to contest. The guy is level 10. He has double your CS. He has 10 out of 18 kills. At this point, I'm gonna assume you're wildly tilted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was I mean, this was one of the worst games I've played in a while, which is why I wanted to show it to you. Yes, yes. That's why I was speaking a lot about theory, but I, I mean, it's if, if a lot of people don't have a strategic game background or sort of any game background where you can speak theoretically, but I think you, you understand what I mean at the beginning mm -hmm. when I'm saying if yeah, you yeah. do this, if you do that, you can see the mm -hmm. snowball effect of all these decisions. Right. Um, and because of that early, so now all of this again, so now, you know, up to this point, you can say, right, my decisions have been bad, but they haven't cost us too much. One dragon. You know, we are down 6k gold and I am Olaf, which means I'm basically nothing. Um, <laughs> but your death here is what ultimately seals the fate of the game. And someone put into chat here, uh, intentionally feeding from a young pike, I think maybe a little bit. But I mean, at that point, you just go Cinderhulk. You Tyler won it. Right. Um, he's not a good jungler 1 to 15. His jungling 1 to 15 is hysterically bad. It's definitely D4 plat 1. But what Tyler 1 does very well is adapting to being bad by understanding the win condition. Now, in this case, you can say, well, everyone sucks, but my bot lane isn't doing too badly. And we have a Shen. Full tank this. Full tank this. There's no reason to go warrior. You lost the, you, the window to get warrior is dead. You know? Um, like going warrior here it just makes you die easier. At this point, you're looking to go uh, Cinder Hulk, maybe Black Cleaver at the most and full tank otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, but you've got Caitlyn to stack the Black Cleaver, which is nice. Um, you've got the rest of the passive, the CDR, the HP. Warrior is the, the tilt greed. I still want to carry. I'm the carry, you know, but those days are gone. And that death up here is what sealed the fate because he takes this. Okay, now from his perspective, he sees he sees the bottom lane uh, go for a fight there. You see him go across mid lane, right? Mm -hmm. Um... If I were him, no. I mean, he's got two minutes of Herald. He knows now that because the Shen is down, and because you're so far behind, this is free dragon. So your death up top gave them the objective control that they didn't have. And that's the thing in gold, in that plat. Even if you're having a bad game, a lot of the times that won't translate to objective control. Because mm -hmm. they're so focused on killing. Um, and in silver, it's really just mayhem. But in plat, in, in gold, there's a little bit of a delay to their objective focus. In high elo, it's objectives, objectives, objectives. You know, kill these subjective. Mm -hmm. Plat and gold, it's like kills, kills, kills. Oh, those objectives, we can take those. You know? Right, yeah. And because of that, you always have an opportunity to win. But unfortunately, that one Tom and Jerry moment up top gave them that window to finally have the confidence to do the objectives. Mm -hmm. um, and here now, if you want to talk about playing from behind, is this Cinderhawk would have would have helped you. Mm -hmm. Because you do have a Swain, you do have Pike resets, you need one team fight. You've got Lux, Heimerdinger, Volkaz. They're gonna have a lot of Zonyas, but one good team fight with a Shen and a tank Olaf just storming the backline with his ultimate and not dying. Mm -hmm. With your true damage, is your win condition. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're focused on climbing and making every game a win, right? 
you need to sort of, again, crisis assessment. Right, this is the end of the world. What do you do? Stockpile canned tuna. Um, instead of stockpiling canned tuna, you bought fresh meat. Mm -hmm. that's, not gonna, that's not gonna do you any good in two months. You know? Right. You, you're gonna starve to death. And that's what going worry is. If that makes sense. Yeah. Now, yeah. You, now you're counter jungling. I think now you're just like, well, I've got nothing else to do. Might as well try to get something. But you have to waste your ultimate. So in, that ca in this case, what you want to do, you want to draw a metaphorical line. It's even not that metaphorical. The vision line of doom is here. Now you have no vision here. So your job now is to be a tanky ward bot. Vision is here. You clear your camps. Nothing else to do. Let's go down here. Let's scan. Let's get a control wood in this. Let's get rid of this plant. Let's take my raptors and krugs. No, you wanted his chickens. Fresh, juicy chickens. Instead of, we're really far behind, but one team fight and it's gold, we can win definitely. Let me secure my house. You didn't secure your house. And if you scan down here, look at what you get. Clear this, clear this, put a control wood here. You give yourself a window to see what they're gonna do. And then you wait. You let them tilt into you. Mm -hmm. Let them get impatient. That's your win condition at this point because you have to trust them to know how to close out a game with good macro. I think you know that they don't know how to do that. They're waiting for you to greed and to store fresh meat in the, in the apocalypse in order to win. Right. Um, also, just remember, wait at the edge of the base for time constraints. Um, I think you know that, but... Actually, well, I want to ask a question about that specifically. How do I do that? Do I walk to the edge first and then buy, or do I do yes. it while I... Okay. Walk to the edge, and while you're walking to the edge, you can press P for the store, because that's the thing. While you walk from here to here, you're ready shopping. And when you're done shopping, you leave. Right, now, yeah. you're waiting here, you're shopping, you stop shopping, and now you have to wait for this. That's mm -hmm. two seconds. And I don't know if you caught the coaching that we did. Some people missed it, but I literally spoke to a silver Warwick, and I said, or was it a gold Warwick? You, you went into this jungle, and you just told me you knew where the enemy jungler was, so why'd you go into the jungle? There's no need to. If you had gone straight down to the bottom, you'd get the scuttle crab. And guess what? He went into the jungle, didn't have to, went down to the bottom scuttle crab, and he missed it by 10 HP. Those two seconds, those two to six seconds he wasted was a kill, a scuttle, and a gank bottom lane. All because right. he checked where he knew the jungle wasn't. Same thing for you. Add two seconds up all the time. Imagine if instead of contesting that level four red buff, you sit on the edge, you take this, you beat Jax by four seconds. You mm -hmm. avoid him, you get all your camps, you get a full clear, now you're back in the game. Right. You see? It's, it all adds up. So not night, it's just, it's just 1.5 seconds, and when you get home guards, it's less, but imagine you go back, say, eight times in a certain period, mm -hmm. and you get to drag in eight seconds before they do. That's enough time to do it. Right, yeah. You know? It's all what-ifs, but it's putting yourself in a position to have whatever advantage you can do. And in, and in this elo, that really stacks. So here now, yeah. um, sorry, you're gonna say something? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in general, I'm like a big fan of these small like efficiency things. Mm -hmm. Just here, I just wasn't sure which what's the best way to do it. So I just wanted to clarify. No, no, there's no problem. The, the reason is because you can shop while moving to a degree, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. whatever maximize. Here, there's, I mean, you have, you have two controls again, um, but you're not using them or scanning them. You're just waiting. You know, uh, obviously when you tilt, you start to avoid these kind of mistakes. Uh, sorry, not avoid, but avoid doing good things because you're not thinking about them just because you're so annoyed. But um, a simple scan there would have told you, oh, it's warded. Let me do Krugs. Let me wait. Let me bait the cane in. But instead you stood there. You did nothing. And now the cane shows up and I mean... Oh, okay, good. Shut down, nice. Nice Shen ult. Okay, Caitlyn shouldn't have died. So in the end, not so bad. He flashes the stuff. <laughs> Lux. All right. Let's go. Swain's the win condition. But you realized something they didn't, did you? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching it on the map. I'm like, oh, I see it. We're losing the base. But they're like, no, we must get this. And that's welcome to this elo. And that's my point to you is that you don't want to be in the situation because they're not going to help you. Right. And I have a, I have a coaching after this that's it's slight it's it's this lower elo, but 
his champion choice is also going to be coming to question in terms of what can your champion do in the situation that lets you win. And when mm -hmm. you're this, what what does it do? <laughs> Nothing. But if I'm Evelyn, if I'm Rengar, this guy's dead. This guy's dead. Uh, they all died. Because eventually, with good camp sequencing and doing everything I've said so far, protecting your jungle, I am still equal level to the cane. I can tell you, even mm -hmm. in a game that I'm behind, I end up quite often two levels ahead of the enemy jungle, even in a bad game. Mm -hmm. Still, just because I say, right, I can't gank it. There's no point. Let me control my jungle first and foremost. Let me sneak an objective when he ganks top lane. So instead of trying to gank so much, right, Kane goes top lane and wastes all that time top lane, go solo the dragon. You could have done that. And guess what? Epic monsters have catch-up XP. So dragons and heralds, very nice. When you're right, behind. Yeah. Very nice. And also helps your team. You know? But instead, you know, um, you went mid and you waffled. And you then you Tom and Jerry top lane. But that could have been a dragon, for example. Right, yeah. Is there anything about the end of the game specifically? Because it looks like it's pretty much... No, no, I don't think we... Like, I mean, actually I want to ask this. Uh, to you, like whenever I watch free plays, I basically only watch like the first 15, maybe maybe 20 minutes if it's interesting. Um, but by then, I think there's so many, so many mistakes happening in the game that it isn't really worth watching the end anymore. Unless I'm like fishing for like a specific late game player or, or something. But I mean, I almost never do that. So I, yeah. I always stop at like 15 to 20 minutes. But what do you think? Um, depends on the game. If I have a very close game that goes for 40 minutes, I'll look and, and I and I look at the gold graph and we threw a 20k gold lead. You know, I'm going to watch the last 10 minutes. So why do yeah, we throw yeah, a 20k gold lead? Uh -huh. you know? In this case, I think the issue is not in late game. Your issue yeah. is 100%. This, <laughs> I, I agree. This early agree. phase, you know. Uh -huh. um, right. But the other point I wanted to, where was it? That was very important. So you, you had your Tom and Jerry moment. Um... So we got the kill here. You die to Kane because you overstay. And now you think, okay, so this moment here, you're down 5k gold. Um, which sucks. And you did Raptors. And you get this kill. I think here is your comeback moment. Nice, right. What's next? You know you're going to see the Kane here. So let's see. Where does Kane show? Now, do you use your F keys or click around a lot? Uh, I use F keys absolutely. Use, okay, I'm okay, right. So, so I'm old. I'm old. I didn't play those games, so I have to, I have to click. I don't have to reach. But I always click, and I'm always, I would see this. You would uh -huh. see this immediately. Um, you can't help him. So this is where things. This is where I think a lot of your early game problems. You make them more extreme. By not doing the camp sequencing I'm talking about. You don't focus uh -huh. on controlling your house. You don't focus on the vision control as much. You have the wards, but you don't have the practice, sort of. Like, you do it, and then you forget about it. And you're like, oh, I have this control ward. Let me throw yeah, it on the side while I'm ganking. <laughs> I think what it is is that I'm playing every game as if I were ahead. Yes. I guess. Because, like, yes. if I'm ahead, I'm obviously not going to farm as much, right? Yes, exactly. exactly. Um, so exactly. I'm trying to come back by making even more extreme plays, which isn't really... No. It doesn't really end up working. Exactly. And my champion pool, because I like to play goddamn Zyra and, and Orn and Evelyn, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and I, I, I climbed with Warwick and, and Rek'Sai, so I can do both. It's just, I don't like it. I'm, I'm, I love to use my brain to win. I'm not right. a brawler. I'm a brain guy. Um, you know, here I'm saying, okay, how can I get my lead back? You're only down a level, but the next time you meet, he's level 10. Mm -hmm. That's huge. You know, like in terms of individual gold, he's got five, three. He's 2k gold ahead of you. Right, yeah. So, a lot of people in the Discord and in, in low elo in general now, they, they leave this game, like, stupid pike mid, 0 and 2, stupid bot lane inting. You know, I think you've got the right attitude. You haven't once said anything about your laners. It's always about you. And that's good. Okay? But mm -hmm. now I see this. You think, okay, he's dead. And if they dive him, can you help him? Very unlikely. I mean, you show up here... Like, if you had gone straight there, you see this. That's very low. And I know you see that, but you walk over the vision here. Instead mm -hmm. of going through your jungle and using this plant, see, I would have not even gone here. Mm -hmm. um, I would have used the plant to walk up this way. And you see this plant here. Is this open? Let me turn the fog up off. You've got this plant active too. Mm -hmm. You see? So now here, let's what, see what the Jax is. They saw you coming up. They had all the preparation they needed to, to, to do what they did to you. Mm -hmm. But if you had just hit the plant and gone up to hold this wave, 
That's good too, you know. They're low, right? Yeah, yeah. They're low. You mm -hmm. have ultimate. You can... Ugh, do I know that? I mean, the power of, of this... These guys are very far ahead, but... My brain gives you two options in this case. You take Romp, you take Wolves, you sequence on down, you get this. You know Dragon is spawning. You know he's going to go to this. Maybe you take the Dragon, okay? Mm -hmm. you use your scanner and your ward control to make sure you control all your camps and you get a Dragon. That's it. That's, that's all you focus on. That gets you level right. 8, almost level 9. Option mm -hmm. 2 is... Right, there's no, there's a can of minion here that's going to die. I like can of minions when I'm behind. They're, they're gold, good experience. They're chunky and low. Uh, they both have no flash if you were tracking, and you def definitely saw the jacks flash. Sit here. You got two plates. You got ultimate. Mm -hmm. uh, Kane has no ultimate. Jax has no ultimate. Wave clear this. Oh, this, mm -hmm. this is all beautiful soak. Deny him a plate. What's he going to do? No, no, no. I must get you. Right, yeah. Screw you. I must kill you. This is, this is, you know, like, God damn it! you're two levels ahead. I hate you so much. I hate myself. I hate everything. You must die. But here is, I measured, I screwed up, but I'm still going to win this game. Mm -hmm. Take the experience. If he comes, he dies. Kane is forced to leave. He's not going to do this now because he sees your full HP. So mm -hmm. you deny him the Herald take because he's going to have to go to back to base. You see? And when that happens, now your Shen will be up. In three seconds, you've cleared this. Now you can fall down and take your full camps, okay? And then you could even look to make a play on the Herald, assuming mm -hmm. you had vision control. You know the trick here, right? You've this... been walking around the thing. Yeah, so yeah. That because you're Olaf. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because you're Olaf and you have the control ward, you can easily scan here. Just throw your axe into the pit and mm -hmm. pull out the Herald. Mm -hmm. He's not going to check this because he would have gone back to base. Mm -hmm. You would have had time to do the Herald. And that's essentially what you wanted because, guess what? Five juicy plates? I don't know. Like, this whole sequence, for me, is you back in the game. Right, yeah. Cannon wave, Grump wolves, free herald, use it mid to get four or five plates. He's now going to go back to base and probably sequence down to these because the dragon's going to be up. Even if you give up the dragon, you go back to base, you're going to have equalize your goal to him and now you can counter gank him on the bottom lane when he dives mm -hmm. and you won't need to go top lane because you would have just killed Gromp and Wolves and you would have cleared Herald and you know they have no flash so that that right there your decision to um, play like you had level 11 and 3000 gold on him is what is what cost you the game everything prior are mistakes that added up to this moment but could still be rectified by your decision right here right yeah I think this is one of my biggest weaknesses actually like getting back from like bad early games basically um because whenever i'm ahead early game i usually don't have any problems winning the games it's really just when i when i don't get the early game i want i'm kind of like not sure of how to how to really come back to the game yeah i agree and actually this is like i mean you've talked so much about like rengar and evelyn and what i could have done with these champs mm -hmm. like would you suggest me actually switching more into assassins or I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not too set on like a champion tool, right? I'll, like, I'll play whatever makes me improve, basically. It's not like I'm a huge like Warwick or like Rek'Sai fan because I like the champion so much. Um, it's just like a playstyle thing, you know. But if you think like one playstyle would suit me way better, I mean, I might consider actually switching. I think it's good to play different playstyles to understand the limits of what they could do as well. Now, right now, you're very much in an early game brute force meta. You don't understand the Kane's camp sequencing efficiency, which he of course hasn't even done. His Kane camp sequencing disgusts me. Not quite, but <laughs> it makes me, it's like you're not, he's not optimizing Kane either, but mm -hmm. you don't know that he's not optimizing Kane, so you don't know how to punish it. You see? Right. So learning Evelyn, learning Rengar, while it gives away your early game control, will teach you a lot about restraint. Mm -hmm. So you might not win a lot in the beginning, let's be, let's be honest, but mm -hmm. it will teach you so much about restraint. Now, Rengar is a very much Feast of Famine champion, so the way you play can be very uh, rewarding, but one bad play isn't the end of the world because you get to team it. Now you control your jungle, one lane gank, two bone, two stacks, and you're in it. You know, it's a very, very nice in that sense. And because of your, your scaling, you have split push ability. You have uh, one shot ability. And against this team comp, I see three beautiful targets. Lovely. Pike, yeah. bait the Zonyas. Go have fun. Triple kill every time. Um... But so, it's not so, so much. It's not so much. It might be best for your play style. For me, it's it's uh -huh. it's it's about teaching you measured early game and restraints. Because now you're playing, where if your play style pans out, you don't have to think anymore. 
Mm -hmm. And when you're behind, you have to think and it's punishing you because you never find yourself in that situation. Because, I mean, past 20 minutes, you're useless anyway. But if you're playing an Evelyn or a Rengar where a win is still on the table no matter what in any game, it teaches you to think very, very differently about your risk assessment. Yeah, this is something I also carried over from StarCraft a lot because, I mean, since it isn't a team game, once you're behind or you think you've lost the game, you can just GG out, right? Yeah, um, exactly. But, like, here I have to play the whole game. So I, in, in StarCraft, I never really thought about how to, like, come back into a game. So this is something very new to me. Mm -hmm. So you just recommend me switch out the Olaf for the Rengar for a couple of games, or...? <sighs> Rek'Sai, I think, is a better champion for you to play than Olaf. I think mm -hmm. the Olaf experiment needs a break. Uh, very clearly, there's a disconnect between the way you play, because he can full clear, and you're not mm -hmm. full clearing. You're playing like a Rek'Sai who can afford to ignore camps. Mm -hmm. I see this 11 0 10 Warwick game. You know Warwick's game. You know I like Warwick. Uh, I think it works for you as well. I think the Olaf thing, you're brute forcing, t literally, uh, too mm -hmm. many things. Like, your Warwick is so much cleaner. Look at this. You know? Uh, tilt. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Tilt. You, you know, you're finding yourself making one bad play with Olaf, and you're GGing in your mind. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with Rex very... and with Rex, sorry, with Rex and, and Warwick, you have a bit more versatility because a Rex can dominate a team fight with a, a flash W, Halo blades into an ult. You know, you can take out a squishy. Mm -hmm. With Olaf, mm -hmm. what do you do? You know, you don't have that same power unless you're fed. So I right. think learning Evelyn and Rengar for you, even if normals, even if on a smurf, just to understand the concept of, hey, I'm behind, but I, if I'm smart, I can win. Would be very would be huge for you, would be huge mm -hmm. for you. Even if you don't stick with them, even if you think you know screw assassins, I don't like the play style because of the late game. Um, it would just help you in these times with Warwick and Evelyn and Rexai that the world isn't perfect. Right, right. If I were to like later down the line actually uh, switch the rank or the Evelyn maybe back out for another early game champion, do you think like Elise would maybe be a good choice? I mean, well, I know she's obviously like a high level champ, but. Yes, at least it's very good. If you're looking for a, an AP early game to try and mix it up, maybe give you a bit more versatility in your ganks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that could work as well. It's an early game champion. It would, re would reward your play style. But again, mm -hmm. a bit more finesse. You can't just brute force everything. Your pathing mm -hmm. needs to be good. But you have escape ability and a wall dash, which I think will help you. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, then I'm just going to play a couple games with Ranger, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think you need to chest them out just to understand limitations of other play styles. Mm -hmm. That will help you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good. I hope it was helpful. Um, obviously you can DM and we'll, sp we'll speak again. So, uh, mm -hmm. good luck in the, on that learning journey and then let me know if you have questions and, uh, yeah, we can move forward again. Yeah. Thanks. This was a really cool session and goodbye Twitch chat. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.